Sal Bahamas, we present the Path to Life in the Box Discoveries. Join us on Zoom, YouTube, Facebook, and follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Allow God's healing power to reach you wherever you are. Your growth continues here. Good evening, everyone. And welcome again to the Path to Life in the Box Discoveries. It's such a wonderful day today, and we're happy to see that all of you have joined us. Oh, I gone down. I am gone down. Oh my. Uh oh. I, I my internet went down. Hi, Michelle. You're fine. I can hear you. Okay. Um, we're so thrilled that you've joined us, friends, family, wherever you are tonight. We can say welcome. Uh, can't wait to find out what got us in store for us tonight uh, from the box. Let's discover Christ in you. Let's be intentional about our commitment to his will and to his way. The word is being presented tonight with power, and God has been blessing tremendously. I know that I have been blessed. And uh, I'm sure my co-host has been blessed as well. Uh, the more these meetings continue, the more I realize that God created this world with us in mind. Uh, we are the apples of his eye, and he desires us uh, to all be saved in his kingdom. Uh, You're right, Clayton. We're in for a great time tonight. Yes, indeed, Michelle. Pastor Paul took us back in the box last night under the power of the Holy Spirit. He presented the word with power under the topic, when serpents talk, when serpents talk. Uh, what a powerful inspirational word that was last night. The state of yes. the dead was cleared up for us. Uh, the body plus the breath equal a living soul and there's no such thing as a dead soul. Uh, the dead wait for us in the grave and the like. What did you get from it, Michelle? Well, I too was very excited about what was in the box and I was not disappointed at all. I wish to welcome also those who have joined us. And I think this is a good time, Clayton, for them to, everyone to get on their phones, text someone, tell them about the meetings, join us. But yes, while they're doing that, let's, let's take advantage of, of something very special that I understand is coming up for us right now. For 50 years, UG Pines Institute has been helping thousands to heal mind, body, and soul through lifestyle intervention, natural remedies, and prevention and reversal of diseases. Because of the pandemic, you can go to them. So they're offering virtual classes valued at $5,000 for an unbelievable $20. Yes, you heard it right. Learn about weight management, gardening, reversal of cancer, diabetes, cholesterol, cooking class, and more. Just go to the UGPines.org and follow the links classes begin on sunday and here at the path to life in the box discoveries we want to sweeten the pot invite 10 or more guests to the meeting on friday register their names and two of them might just be sponsored for the classes and save that 20 dollars. so invite your friends see you on friday at seven your growth continues here well, Clayton, I'm super excited about tonight's lineup. After hearing that, there's so much more in store for us. Yes. Uh, but here at the Path to Life in the Box Discoveries, we're keeping it fresh. And every night you will get a little something different. But before we go any further, we need to share with those joining some vital, important uh, features. Uh, this is the last week of Bye. the In the Box series. We continue with live streaming. We'll only break tomorrow night and return on Friday night. Uh, this Sabbath, we will continue or we will culminate in the In the Box series, beginning with a review of our Bible lesson study, which starts at 9.30 and, come, and continuing with our finale at 11. The series is being recorded and will be posted on YouTube at the end of each service. We encourage you to share the links with those who are unable to join. This is good stuff to share. It sure is, Clayton. And we have great prizes and special giveaways tonight. Our oh, yeah. prize is we have some very special masks, lovely masks. 
and um, they are being given out, but we asking our guests to register in the link below. Just put your name and your email address in the chat so that you can take advantage of these special prizes. Definitely. And then each night, the CTV News Network will bring us international news along with local and church news highlights. Our news anchors are Daniel Bosswick and Shelby Nicole Benaby. And what a great job they've been doing uh, so yes. far. Yes. Yes, and then there's prayer. More prayer, more power, they say. And the smart nugget. I enjoyed the smart nugget yeah. tremendously last I'm night. I'm looking forward to it tonight. <laughs> yes, telling us about the, the super fluid water. We all need lots and lots of water. But I can't wait to see what the smart nugget is about tonight. <laughs> all right, so get set. Uh, and we'll, as we go to praise God in advance for what he will do for us this evening. And so now we'll go right into our CVT news. Yes. Go. Good evening, I'm Daniel Bostwick. And I'm Sheldon Nicole Benaby, and these are your CTV News Highlights. You got it. In our international news spotlight, we have someone who is dearly loved by the Centerville family and just as beautiful as her voices, Marguerite Samuel. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? How is your family? We're doing really well. We're doing We're well. Now. We're living in Brandon, Florida, right outside of Tampa on the east side. Florida, that's a COVID hotspot right now. How are you guys keeping safe? You know, we're doing our best. We've been pretty much home most of the time, go out as needed, you know, groceries and so forth. Uh, but we take our precautions and we go out and we're trying to keep safe. That's amazing. What have you been working on since COVID and before that? What's keeping your time? Well, there are two main things. The first thing is a piece that I was commissioned to write the music for. And it's a piece for first responders, people who sacrifice their time and their well-being to help and serve us so that we can all remain healthy. And the second thing is Friday night music. My husband and I, we do live on Facebook and YouTube uh, where people can tune in and they can make requests, song requests, and if we know it, we sing it, we, and we worship together, and we also record separately uh, specific uh, videos of Christian songs for people to be inspired. That's amazing. I know music during this time is a beautiful therapy. It keep everyone calm, and that's beautiful. I really appreciate that. Um, what is the focus of your YouTube channel? That's a really good question. Um, the reason that I do music period, besides it being fulfilling to myself, is really to give people a space where they can be connected with God, where their lives can be transformed, they can be healed, they can be changed, they can be uplifted, encouraged, inspired, affirmed, whatever the Holy Spirit desires to do. I want God to use me in order to make that happen. That's the whole purpose of my channel. That's amazing. That's a beautiful answer. I really appreciate that. Um, are there any lessons that you've learned through your experience? Uh, this, in COVID, this whole lockdown, isolation business, you know, there's, there, there are a few things. The first thing I would say is it's really important to have uh, more than ever that quality time with God on a consistent basis. And when I don't you know, for some reason, then the day, the day slips away from me and I don't do that. I find my day is harder. But when I tune into him, life is easier. And the second thing I would say is it's important to have routine. Make a routine for yourself to keep your brain intellectually stimulated, keep your mind going. And it also helps you not to fall too hard into depression. Um, 
And then the third thing I would say is con staying connected with family and friends, maybe not physically, but definitely, you know, through Zoom or Facebook or call phone calls, text messages. Those are very important. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking your time to speak to me this afternoon. It's my pleasure. Okay. Thank you so much. I'm Shabba Nicole Benaby, and these are your CTV News highlights. In local news, in the Prime Minister's most recent address, he announced a two-week lockdown for the entire Bahamas due to the rise in COVID-19 cases. In his address, he announced that there will only be three designated shopping days, which are Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. With this two-week lockdown, we must be sure to listen to the emergency protocols and keep safe and sanitized the entire time. Several nurses, doctors, and staff from the Princess Margaret Hospital's Accident and Emergency Department have called in sick, according to representatives, due to the overwhelming number of critical care patients and the lack of adequate safety protocols set in place to prevent themselves and patients from being exposed to COVID. We pray that this situation is resolved quickly. In Adventist news, the Adventist Book and Nutrition Center would like you to know that their hours of operation are Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. The Centerville Seventh-day Adventist Church Community Services Department is presently looking for non-perishable items to supply the pantry for others in need, especially during these hard times. If you are able to donate, please call 422-0158 to make arrangements for pickups and drop-offs on shopping days. Everyone, remember to stay safe, sanitized, and socially distanced. This has been your CTV News Highlights. I'm Sheldon Nicole Benaby. It's prayer time, Clayton. Right, good evening. Uh, my name is Chino. This is my grandmother. And I'm Carolyn. This is my grandson. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I give you the glory, the praise, and the honor. As we come as your humble servants, I ask that you guide us, protect us, and keep us safe through this service and as well as this pandemic. I just ask that what we have, what we have learned from this in the box series, that we will share it, keep it, and apply it to our lives. And Father, we thank you for your creative and your redemptive power. In six days, you created the heaven and the earth and all living things upon the earth and rested on the seventh day of that first week. And now, Father, forgive us for all our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness, and fill us with your Holy Spirit, that he will direct us from day to day. And we ask, Father, that you will pour a double portion of your spirit upon Pastor Paul as he presents your word. May he present your word with clarity, conviction, and power. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, grandmother and grandson duo, Sister McDonald and Chino. We appreciate those prayers that were sent upon our, our behalf. We would like for all of you to please take advantage of our prayer lines. They are opened immediately following the service. The numbers will be posted on your screen. Please take advantage. There are persons who are waiting just to pray with you. Please call our hotlines, call our prayer hotline. Music is an integral part of uh, every service, and tonight is no different. Uh, tonight, we're going to be blessed by a musical selection from Dia Duvalier in Christ Alone. She will be followed by our smart nugget.
is found He is my light, my strength My song, this cornerstone This solid ground Firm through the fiercest drought And storm What heights of love What depths of peace When fears are stilled When striving cease My comforter My all in all Here in the love of Christ I stand in Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in hell. Bless me, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save. Till on the cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin on him was laid, here in the death of Christ I live. The world by darkness slain, then bursting forth in glorious day. Up from the grave he rose again, and as he stands in victory, since Christ is grip on me. For I am his, and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. And life, no fear and death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever. Bleak me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ, I'll stand. <laughs> Today we're at the Poitiers farm with the chickens. Let's see what lessons we can learn from their eggs. So you're working for Farmer Poitier and he pays you in eggs. Ten eggs to start with. 
The first thing you're going to do when you get paid is return your tithe and give an offering. The next thing you should do, and I want you to make it a priority, is put aside 10% of your earnings, one egg, as your long-term savings. This is money you're going to have for the rest of your life in one form or other. This is not the money you're saving for your car or vacation. That's money you're going to spend. This is your nest egg that you're going to have forever. Don't worry about that one egg seeming small because in no time it will build up and you'll have a basket full of eggs. And as it fills up, I want you to remember Ecclesiastes 11 verse 2. Divide your portion into seven or even eight, for you never know what misfortune may fall upon the earth. And what's another way of saying this? Diversify your portfolio. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. If I'm walking along with my basket full of eggs and I trip and fall, what happens? Everything that I've invested is gone. If there's a hurricane, I lose my job, the house burns down, it's all gone. So as opportunities arise, you want to invest in different things. Maybe some on a fixed deposit, a part of it in real estate, duplex or Airbnb. Some of it can go into stocks, maybe uh, government registered stocks or even corporate bonds and now we can invest in the U.S. market. What's amazing about this principle of diversifying? Well, a study was done recently to find out what type of portfolio earned the highest return over the last 37 years. And you guessed it, the portfolio that was invested in seven types of assets. So once again, we see science confirming what the Bible has been saying for centuries. But we don't need science to tell us to get our financial house in order. Let's start now. Well, it's time for the word. And... Uh, We've had an inspiring, wonderful program so far with the news, the nuggets, and the yes. singing. What a lovely yeah. song, and what well, a rendition that was, In Christ Alone. Um, and I'm looking forward to the word tonight, aren't you, Michelle? Uh, the presenter yes, for the Path to Life yeah. in the Box Discovery is yes. Pastor Paul Savala. Amen. Uh, he's back to reveal what else is in the box. The topic this evening is the seven T's of Genesis, the seven T's of Genesis. Now, I tried to figure out what that meant last night, and <laughs> listening to what he said, the message was coming, and I, I don't think I discovered what one of them might be, so you know I'm anxious to hear what they are today. But please welcome, of before he comes, <laughs> the melodious voice of Louis Claire. Great is thy faithfulness. Then the message from Pastor Paul Scavala. Be blessed. Thou 
changest not thy compassions they fail not as thou hast been thou forever wilt be Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning new mercies I see. All I have needed thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer, winter, springtime and harvest, Sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness mercy and love. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. for sin and a peace that endureth thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow blessings all mine with ten thousand beside great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me.
Great is thy faithfulness. And thank you, uh, Louis, for reminding us this evening of God's faithfulness, which is always present. He has never been unfaithful to you and I as his creation. Thank you so much for reminding us of this. And of course, Dia, um, for your uh, re also reminding us that Jesus is everything to us um, as you've ministered to us in song this evening. And good evening to everybody. We want to thank you for being here. We thank our hosts for bringing us to this point and for every aspect of the um, worship experience this evening. We are so delighted that, that you have chosen to join us. Those of you who are with us on Zoom, those who are on Facebook, and uh, on uh, YouTube, if you're there, or later on when it does get on YouTube, I was talking to somebody um, yesterday, and when I called them, they said, I'm watching the message from the night before. And um, they were excited about the fact that they could catch some part that they had missed. And so, uh, please, if you need to go back to YouTube to, 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 to get right into the meat, because we do move with speed and rapidity here in the messages each evening. And so you won't get everything, um, but you can go back. That's one of the good things about technology. Um, and uh, we, we just give God thanks for that. Well, uh, it's Wednesday night already. Can you imagine that? Wednesday evening already. I mean, uh, the second week is just flying by just like that. But we are excited to be able to present to you another word from the Lord. And um, tonight, as we do that, we want to remind you to continue to pray. Pray in your heart that God would open your mind to receive his word in the way that he intends for it to be received. And you know, he also not only wants you to, to, to receive it, uh, but he also wants you to, to move from just believing what he says and also to doing what he says. Blessed are those we are told in the book of Revelation chapter 1 that not only hear the word of God, but those also who become doers of God's word. Because when we believe something, then we act in accordance with what we believe. And so we're just delighted uh, for you being here this evening. Our theme text, Psalm 16 and verse 11, Thou wilt show me the path to life in thy presence is what? fullness of joy and at thy right hand are pleasures for evermore. Let me remind you that uh, there are those who are being prepared, who have committed themselves to, to not only hearing the word, but becoming doers of the word. And they, the first thing that they want to do is to be baptized and to follow Jesus all the way in the watery graves of baptism. And so this coming Sabbath, uh, we are planning a baptism and uh, we, we look forward to, to uh, many making that decision for Jesus. If you have not yet decided to follow him all the way, um, it's uh, available to you. You can go right down to the chat group, look at the link. There is a commitment form there that you could sign up indicating whether you want prayer, you want baptism, you want a visit, um, you want a Bible lesson, a Bible study. Um, uh, whatever it is, and you can indicate there to us. Uh, we had two winners last night, and we got those names from our, our media team. And so our, our Bible worker will be contacting you for your $10 um, top-up on your uh, phones. And so uh, as we make our promises, we will fulfill them and keep true to the promises that we make. There are those of you who need a Bible. We have Bibles available that uh, you can get to read. That is a, a um, hard copy Bible. And so uh, just let us know. You want, want prayer? Our prayer team is standing by each evening. You can call one of the four numbers that will be given, and they are more than willing to pray for you. I have some good news tonight. Uh, last night, I asked you to pray for three uh, persons in particular. We didn't call the names. One of them was having a lot of mental stress, and I was able to speak with that person today, and praise be to God, they have given their burdens to the Lord, and God has brought relief to them. 
God has brought relief to them. So God is good and uh, he's good all the time. And so we're delighted that he answered our prayers out here uh, last evening. And we pray for that, uh, those persons this morning in our prayer uh, meeting at six o'clock. And so tomorrow morning, we'll be meeting at six again. So if you have a prayer request, send it forth. And we are more than happy to uh, put your petitions before the Lord in prayer. Well, tonight we're going to be looking at, I think I told you the seven T's. Is that right? Uh, in Genesis. And guess what? I found another one today. So it's going to be eight. <laughs> All right. So uh, we're going to unfold and unravel these very quickly for you um, as we look at uh, these, these eight T's in the book of Genesis that relate to us as individuals. Um, and so you want to get ready on the mask, get ready, get set, and we're going to go. But before we go, we always want to pray and ask God to bless his word to our hearts this evening. So bow with me very, very shortly as we pray. Dear Lord, tonight we thank you. We thank you for uh, Jesus. We thank you for the gift of, of salvation through uh, what you did for us on Calvary's cross coming to die for our sins. And oh Lord, there are many in this town tonight who need to make Jesus their choice. And beyond that, there are those who have said yes to Jesus, but they are still halting between two opinions in regards to what you asked us to do. And so we pray that people will recognize that you are calling them a little higher in their walk with Jesus. And uh, that might mean that they have to make some additional decisions about following you all the way, all the way to Calvary with Jesus tonight. Oh, Lord, open my mind, my heart, and, and, and I, I receive your Holy Spirit tonight to be uh, the instrument to, to share the gospel. You be the teacher. I will be your mouthpiece. And we lift up Jesus, and you promise that if we lift you up, that you will draw all men unto yourself. And this is our desire. This is our prayer. We want to see souls saved in God's kingdom. Uh, no matter the weather, no matter the, the pandemic, no matter the, the COVID-19, you are still in the business of saving souls. And this is our desire tonight. We want to see more uh, people saved in the kingdom of God. And so hear our prayer answer our prayer. Give us our heart's desire. Give us our heart's desire and speak to us tonight. We pray in Jesus' name and let all God's people say amen and amen. So uh, tomorrow night, rather, tomorrow night is off. Tomorrow night we are off in terms of uh, having the meeting here on Zoom, but we want you to continue to pray. Pray for somebody who needs to make up their, de their, their decision for Jesus Christ. And then we return on Friday evening. And on Friday evening, we will look at the subject, where are you? Where are you? And then on Sabbath morning, the maturing of a conversation. The maturing of a conversation. And so you want to keep these two messages in mind. Where are you on Friday night? And then the maturing of a conversation on Sabbath morning. Uh, we begin with our Bible study at 9.30 and then our preaching service at 11 a.m. So please keep this in mind. Turn with me in your Bibles tonight to Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. Uh, by now, you should have your, your Genesis uh, book should be all marked up. All right. Um, I, I remember the story of a little boy who was sitting in his grandma's lap and and um, she would read from the Bible, and every time she would read from the Bible, he would jump in her lap to hear the wonderful stories from Grandma. And as he looked at his grandma's Bible, he saw all over the Bible uh, two letters, T and P, T and P. And so he turned to his grandma, being a curious little fellow, he says, Grandma, why do you have God's word all marked up with T and P? And Grandma looked at him with a smile on her face, she says, well, everywhere where you see that I have the, those letters T and P, that means that I've, I've, I've tried God and I've proved God. I've tried God and I've proved God. So you need to take your Bibles and mark it all up. And Genesis should be all marked up by now. 
as we have dug in the box. So you're going back in the box with me tonight, and let's see what God has in store for us. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. We're in the conversation. Remember, God has engaged us in this conversation, and he is doing everything to make sure that we are understanding what he is trying to say to us. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. And the Bible says, and God said, let us make man in our what? Image after our likeness and let them have what? Dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Now you remember a few nights ago, we talked about the image of God. And a part of the image of God is that God has given us the capacity to have dominion over the things in this earth. And I reminded you that that dominion is limited to this earth. It's limited to this earth. And uh, um, as a result of it, we need, to, we need to become good stewards of this whole concept of dominion. The whole concept of dominion evolves into the concept of management, of management. All right? And so I, I looked at this concept of dominion from a uh, dictionary point of view. And I, you know, the dictionary says when you talk about dominion, it gives a number of words. It gives the words of um, ascendancy and dominance and domination and superiority and predominance and preeminence and, and primary and authority, control, command, uh, power, sway, jurisdiction, sovereignty, lordship, all of this in the dictionary. But however, when I look at it in the original setting, dominion is the relationship of a man to the rest of creation which has to do with the matter of rulership. Dominion is the relationship of man to the rest of the creation in regards to how he manages and rules over the creation. So I, I boil it all down to the matter of management, being good stewards of what God has given to us because if we're going to manage something, if we're going to rule something, we have to rule it in relationship to how God would be a ruler over us. And so the use of the plural term shows that God planned from the very beginning to create more than one individual. And by transferring to Adam, the ruling or management power over all the earth, and by extension, Eve, God planned to make man his representative or governor over this planet or over all the earth. It is a delegated position. What kind of position did I say it is? It is a delegated position. In other words, I could give it to you, and I can withdraw it from you, all right? And so uh, when I delegate this to you, I expect you to, to represent me in, in your management of this earth. And so this phase, in fact, covers everything on the earth, not mentioned by name, including the beast of the field. Let's look at it in Psalm 8, verses 6 through 8. God limited man's supremacy to this earth, not transferring to Adam rulership over other celestial bodies. Therefore, what did God give man to manage? And I have cast them into these eight T's that will help to make it easy for you to remember. At least it makes it easy for me to remember. And as we look carefully at the setting, there are elements that God entrusted to man here in Genesis. Man certainly, therefore, is to reflect God's management approach 
when he is placed over the management of the earth. The first thing that God wants man to be a good manager of in the setting of the garden is the first T, which is the T representing time. Would you say that with me? T for time. And we're going to go into each of one of these a little bit. So I'm going to go through the eight of them quickly. So number one, God wants us to be good managers of time. Number two, God gave to Adam and Eve when he created them, he gave them talents. He gave man talents. And he wants us to be good managers of the talent. As a matter of fact, when God said to Adam, I want you to name the animals and I want you to have dominion, he was already beginning to pull out of Adam one of the talents that he had placed resident inside of him. And I'd like to suggest for you tonight that when God creates us, he creates all of us with certain abilities and talents that we have to be managers of. The third thing that God wants us to be managed of, made Adam and Eve managers of, was the matter of treasures. Treasure. All right? And uh, 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 that is important. And he, he, he gives us certain gifts and, and treasures in our life, and he wants us to be good stewards or good managers of those things. The fourth T. The fourth T, and I've uh, divided this into two, two T's actually, is the matter of tissue, not paper tissue. But our bodies are made up of what? Cells and tissues. And he wants us to be managers of, of our tissues or our temple. Okay? All right. So that's T number four, the tissue of our bodies or the temple body. Then the, the, the fourth or the fifth thing is that he wants us to, to be good managers of our testimony, of our testimony. Would you say that with me? He wants me to be a manager of my testimony. Then he wants us to be managers of touch. Managers of touch. That's number six. All right. Write them down because we're going to go back over them very quickly. And I'm going to give you all the biblical text for all of these. Number seven, he wants us to be managers of the trash. <laughs> he wants us to be managers of the trash, good managers of the environment. And the last one, the last one is that he wants us to be good managers of technology. Technology. All right. So he wants us to be managers of time, managers of talent, managers of treasure, managers of, of, of our tissue temple, managers of our testimony, managers of our touch, managers of the trash, and managers of the technology that God has provided to us. As a matter of fact, we're using that technology tonight. We're using that technology tonight. Okay, and so let's see now. Let's jump right into this very quickly. I'm going to move with speed and rapidity, but you can always go back uh, because these meetings are being recorded and we're able to review. The Bible says that the people in Berea were more nobler than those in Thessalonica in that they went back and they searched the scriptures to see whether these things were so. All right, so time. Let's get right into it. Time is a gift from God that was created in the very beginning. Psalm 193 and verse 16 states that all the days ordained for me were written in your book, meaning God's book. God has a book and he knows all the days that were ordained for you. And one of them came to be. Our times are truly in God's hands. As a matter of fact, in another place, the Bible says that God has appointed unto us uh, to, to be here uh, for three score and ten years. And by reason of strength, what? Four score. All right? And so we only have but a short time to be here on this earth as a result of sin. 
and God knows the time that he has ordained for your life. And uh, in knowing that we only have but a short time, it, 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 it behoves us to be cognizant of this fact that we must make every minute count while we're here on this earth. There's no sense to you going through life, wasting your days from day to day, accomplishing nothing, having no goals in your life, and get to your setting sun days and sit down and say, what have I accomplished? What has God done in and through me? And God says that you need to be a good manager of the time that I have given to you. In Psalm 39 and verse 5, and regardless of the number of years God ordains for us, we say with the psalmist, you have made my days a mere hand breath. That means that you take your hand and you do like that. And that's how long we're here. You've made my days a mere hand breath. The span of my years is as nothing before you. Each man's life is but a breath. So if you were to take your mouth tonight and say, that's how long you're here as far as God is concerned, because uh, for God, he exists in eternity and we exist in time. And while we feel like we have a lot of time to do a whole lot of things before you know it, you blink your eyes twice, you're here today and you're gone today. The question is, what did you do with the time that God has given to you? Because God is going to require of you to give an account. Jesus reminds us that we cannot add a single hour to our lives by worrying about anything. In Matthew chapter 6 and verse 27, take no thought for tomorrow. Don't worry about tomorrow. All right. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 27. And then Ecclesiastes 3 and verse 1 says, reminds us that there is a time for everything and a season for everything, for every activity under heaven. Well, a young person asked me uh, some years ago, he says, Pastor, when is, when, is my time, when is my time to dance? <laughs> and I said to them, <laughs> whenever... whenever God gives you the, the okay to do so, it'll be your time. We don't need to worry about things. God has made life in a system and in an order, and we just have to roll with God. And when we roll with God, God will direct us into all the things that we need to do. So what are we to do with the gift of time? The question then is, the apostle Paul gives this instruction. And do this, in, in Romans chapter 13, he says, And do this understanding the present time. The hour has come for you to wake up from your slumber. Because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness. Ah, let's stop playing with the devil, he says. It's time to walk in the light as Jesus is in the light. So let us put aside the deeds of the darkness and put on the armor of light. Romans chapter 13, verses 11 through 12. Paul also gives us this encouragement in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 16. Be very careful then how you live not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days of evil are here. Be careful how you live. People are, are just living for the moment just to get a good feel now. And then when the good feel now is gone, they're left empty. And, 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 and void and, and feeling like they have accomplished nothing. And at the end of the day, don't, they don't even have two copper, my grandmother used to say, to rub against each other. So it, it's time to walk in the light. When God sheds light in your life, you need to say, Lord, I want to walk in that light. 
You might have been walking in darkness when it comes to understanding the state of the dead. You might have been walking in darkness when, when it comes to understanding that the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. You might have been walking in darkness when it comes to understanding that though uh, your neighbor slaps you on one side of the cheek, you ought to turn the other side. And if they make you, if, 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 if they make you walk one mile, go two miles. You might have been saying, not me. But now that the light of God has come to you and Jesus has, has revealed to you his will, God says, I want you to walk in the light as I am in the light. As maturing stewards, we receive time as a gift from God and strive to make the best use of it in our family relationships. Let me tell you something, parents. You only have one chance to raise those children right. And, and, and before you, you blink your eyes twice, they, they, they come into this world and, 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 and you turn around and next thing you know, they look it up in your face and say, hey, this me now. I, I was looking at a picture. My wife took a picture and the other day. We were looking at some of our family pictures and she took one with our daughter and I was holding her in my one hand, looking at her and I look at her today as a big grown woman. And I look at my sons and they're all up in my face and, and up in my business and trying to tell me what to do. And questioning my thoughts and, and saying, no daddy, we only have one chance and time is fleeting. And God says that we must make good opportunity of this chance. And some of you, this will be the only chance tonight you have to make a decision for Jesus Christ. That chance might not be given to you again. That's why the Bible always says, now is the day of salvation. Behold, now is the time when you need to make your decision for Jesus Christ because we only have right now, time is fleeting. Every January, many people make a lot of good resolutions. And some of them include saying, using time wisely. Uh, this year, I'm going to use my time wisely and accomplish many things. Now we can reflect on how we're doing and resolve again to use our gift of time in a way that honors God and blesses others. Let me say that again. We need to reflect and use our time in a way that honors God and blesses others. That's the only reason we exist. And that is only fitting because, or, or that is only a result of a maturing store, steward doing the right things at the right time in the right seasons and striving for excellence in all that we do, including, including using our time wisely. Isn't it interesting, <laughs> and I'm spending a little time on this time, isn't it interesting that in creation, it is all defined by two, by time segments of 24 hour periods. And in the midst of that, those uh, seven time segments, the last one is emphasized with this time. And it says, that we ought to remember, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days of time I give to you. And one day I ask you to spend with me. And God says to us tonight that, that he is a God of time and he is a on-time God. When God gave his law, the fourth commandment was at the center of the law. And it defines time. For us. And he says, with the six days, you man labor, but this one day, I want you to spend some quality time with me. Now, notice Daniel warned us in regards to the abuse of this time. In Daniel chapter 7 and verse 25, what book did I say? Daniel chapter 7, verse 25, right there in the Old Testament. 
uh, just after Ezekiel, Daniel chapter 7 and verse 25, the Lord tells us that the devil would try to tamper with God's time, that there would be a beast-like power that would think to change God's times and laws, but it would not happen. The Bible says that the beast would only think to change God's times and laws. And from the beginning of time to, to this time, there are only two time or two attempts to change God's times and laws that we see. One, they try to change the commandment that deals with time. That is the fourth commandment and try to change the Sabbath from Sabbath to Sunday. And the second thing is that God says from even or the evening and the morning in Genesis was what? The first day. The evening and the morning was the second day. The evening and the morning was the third day. And man has come along and says, I forget that. The day starts at 12 o'clock in the night. And you and I are governed by man's attempt to distort God's time and laws. In Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 through 12, there are three angels or three messengers, messengers who came along and, and gave warnings to this earth. In Revelation chapter 12, verses chapter 14, rather, verses 6 through 7. Let me take a little time and read this for you. Uh, because it, 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 it seeks to try and undo what the devil has tried to do with God's time. In Revelation chapter 14, verses 6, in verse 1 it says, And I saw another angel in, in the fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Notice he says, I, I, I am letting you know that I am preaching an everlasting gospel. You see, the gospel of Jesus Christ is nothing new. The gospel of Jesus Christ did not only come when Jesus came. The gospel of Jesus of Jesus Christ came, as I told you already, in the Garden of Eden. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, as soon as man sinned, God put into action the gospel of salvation. And now in the book of Revelation, God says, I am bringing to you the everlasting gospel. And I want you to preach it to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, not with a soft voice, fear God or respect God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made the heaven and the earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. Ah, you see here, John is going right back to Genesis. People are asking me, Pastor, why are you digging up in the book of Genesis? Well, you see, God put his footprint in the book of Genesis, and the devil has tried to distort it. And right at the end of the Bible, John the Revelator says, this God who created the heavens and the earth, who made the days according to evening and morning, who made his Sabbath day, that there is a beast power that has tried to distort it, and we need to respect God and go back to what God taught us in the beginning. And he says he's saying it with a loud voice. And this gospel, this, this everlasting gospel, must be preached in all the world. And I want you to know tonight, my brothers and sisters, that this everlasting gospel is not just about uh, the, the Sabbath day. It's not just about the time, but it's about all of these T's that God wants us to get back to, that we have removed ourselves away from. A part of this everlasting gospel, we will see that God is teaching us that we need to love one another. And so John says here in verse 9, and the third angels followed them saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast, in other words, if you follow the things that this beast-like power has tried to implement and replace in God's word, then you are going to fall along with the beast because God is ultimately going to win the battle. And I want to note tonight that I am on the side of God and that I will be victorious with God because I am going to be obedient to what God says and not to what a beast-like power says tonight. Would you say amen? So, this matter of time 
is very, very, very important. I want you to go back and read those texts, especially Daniel chapter 7 and 25 and Revelation 14, 6 through 12. The second T, and we must move very quickly now, the second T <clears throat> has to do with our talents. Our talents include the gifts, the skills, and the abilities that God has given to us. We often hear people talking about their God-given abilities. And this is correct. And this is right on target because all we are, all that we are, and all that we have comes from a gracious God. I don't know about you, but I love gifts. Our talents include the gifts that God has entrusted to us. And let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. Some of us act like what we have, we gave it to us. But when God gives you a gift, he gives you the gift according to the word of God so that we can use it to edify the church or the body of Christ. God, our talents include the gifts that God has entrusted to us. And you can look at a list of them in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. There, many of them are listed there. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. I won't go through all of them tonight. And 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. Speak about some of these gifts and remind us that the Holy Spirit gives various gifts according to his will. And he desires that we use these gifts for the common good, according to 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 10. So using our God-given talents wisely, and I say wisely, you know, because sometimes when God gives us certain gifts to be used for his edification, we take it and use it to edify the devil. And God is never pleased with that. Our talents must be used rightly and well to reflect the fruit of the spirit that Paul mentions in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22. So just as God provided skilled workers to help with the building of the Old Testament tabernacles and temples, so he continues to bless his people today with special gifts and skills to be of service in ways that honor God and bless others. That honor God and bless others. Say that with me. That honor God, honor God and bless others. When we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we become members of the body of, of Christ and the gifts that God gives us is to bless others and to honor Christ. So every disciple, what did I say? Every disciple, everyone who names the name of Jesus Christ, everyone who is born again, everybody who decides to follow Jesus gains a gift as a, as a result of just being a child of God. Each of us have talents to put to work within the body of Christ so that the church might be edified and built up. Would you say amen? Okay, so number, T, number three, treasure or T, number three is our treasure. Treasure or money, some people might wanna say, and many times when we look at this matter, people only think about money, as if money is everything in the world. Ah, the Bible does say some things about money. I want to share some things with you tonight. Money is what we think of most when we think about stewardship. I am sure that you will agree with me that money, as we know it today, as a medium of value exchange, is a very important part of our existence. Would you say amen? How many of you out there can use some more money tonight? <laughs> oh, yes. First Timothy chapter six, verses 17 through 19, it says, command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in whom? In God. Do not put your trust in the things of this world, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good. Be, to be rich is, is in good deeds and to be generous and willing to share. Are you willing to share your money tonight? Am I willing to share my money tonight? Listen, when God gives you money and gives you wealth, he gives it to you not to hoard it, 
not to, 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 to pile it up because some of us are gonna die and leave the little we have and sometimes our families can't even get it. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds and to be generous and willing to share. In this way, they will lay up treasures for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age so that they may make they may take hold of life that is truly life life is not centered around money yes money is good if we use it correctly but let me tell you something there are a whole lot of people who are sick tonight and they can't even that their money can't help them only jesus can there are only a few things we can do with money we can earn it we can give it, we can save it, we can spend it, and we can bequeath it to somebody else. Good stewardship means striving to keep a healthy balance with these things. For example, one can get so concerned with earning that he overworks, and at the expense of his health and relationships, he loses everything. Or one can get carried away with spending and not having anything left for giving and saving. So there has to be a balance in this matter. The above scripture passages affirm that God gives all kinds of good gifts for our enjoyment, but adds that we are to use these gifts. We are to use these gifts for more than our own enjoyment. Our cold and selfish natures at times encourage us to use the money and goods only for ourselves, adopting some strange strategies like God helps those who helps themselves. That's what we say when we wanna justify not giving anybody anything. God helps those who help themselves. But that's not what I saw Jesus do. I saw Jesus help people wherever they were and whatever condition they were in he always made himself available to help others but the new nature within us because of the com the common good and for the expansion of god's kingdom tonight on earth says that we ought to be generous and to help those that we can what joy will follow us into heaven when our glorious lord commands us from our for our wise use of money and says, well done, good and faithful servant. Matthew chapter 25 and verse 21 uh, further alludes to this. It is amazing to me in that in, in, in the Bible and in the gospels, it is amazing that one out of every 10 verses in the Bible, 288 in all, deal directly with the subject of money. The Bible offers 500 verses on prayer, less than 500 verses on faith, but more than 2,000 verses on money and possession. It is the next largest subject in the Bible next to you giving your life to Jesus Christ. So it must be important. After all, Jesus owns everything and he wants to bless us. It is his desire according to 3 John and verse 2. Number four, moving quickly, the, the testimony. Psalm 19 and verse 1. The heavens declare, the Bible says, Psalm 19 and verse 1, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showed his what? Handiwork. When God made this earth, when God created the world and he took the heavens and the earth and he, he took them out of chaos and put them in their right sphere, the psalmist, understood that these creations of God declared the glory of God. Ah, and so when I look at the heavens, when I look at the earth, when I look at the green grass growing all around, and I see how things move in their order, I see how animals uh, uh, continue to reproduce, I see how God has blessed us as human beings and, and we can have children and, and the race continues. It helps me to understand that there is somebody bigger than you and I. And I must manage my life in such a way that I give a testimony of God's goodness. Can anybody testify tonight of how good God has been to them in their lives? 
even in the midst of storms, God is good. Even when we are sick, God is good. Even when we are broke, God is still good. You know, many times we say God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. But the minute something starts to go wrong, we start to say, Lord, what, 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 what's, what's up with you now? But God is good. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. And you are charged as his creation to be a testimony of the goodness of God. Yes. God is looking for some testimonies tonight. He's looking for some testimonies tonight. The fourth or 50, which T are we on now? Number five. <laughs> Number five. Yes, so when we look at nature, certainly we can testify. As a matter of fact, let me say this one thing, one more thing on this matter of testimony. In Romans chapter one, verses 18 and 20, and I want to read this for you. Romans chapter 1. Turn with me very quickly to the book of Romans chapter 1, verses 18 through 20. When we talk about the heavens testifying of God's goodness, it says, for the wrath of God is revealed. Verse 18, Romans chapter 1, verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all, all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. What is revealed? The wrath of God is revealed against all unrighteousness of man who hold the truth of God in unrighteousness. Verse 19, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. And notice in verse 20 what it says, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world. You want to know where I got it from? Right here in Romans chapter 1, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. In other words, what Paul says, because of what I've created in the atmosphere, because of my creation, because of, uh, of the earth, and because of what I have done, that when I come back again, even if Pastor Paul didn't preach one message. Those of you who are out there listening to me tonight and who might listen in the future, you will have no excuse to say that you didn't know about the goodness of God because what is revealed in nature is enough to let you know that there is somebody bigger than you and I. You will have no excuse. You can't go to God in, the, in, 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 in God's judgment day and say, Lord, I didn't know. Lord, nobody told me. God says that, that, that what is revealed in nature will judge you. God has made it very clear that he is the creator and the sustainer of us all. Number five, five T, touch. Touch refers to, to the relationship we have with God. You know, God has made us as relational beings. And I don't know about you, but, you know, um, I like to, to, to touch my wife. And I like to, to get that sense of, of feel. Can anybody say amen? Are there any witnesses out there? Can you, can you testify to this tonight? And so when God made, <laughs> when God, oh my Lord, have mercy on me tonight. When God made us, he made us with, 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 the, with the capacity to, to, to be in a relationship. And, and touch here is significant of relationship. He made Adam and Eve. Adam said, Lord, I don't see anybody looking like me. And when Adam said, bone of my bone, uh, that, that's the touch. You know, a, a marriage is not a marriage until the bone of bone takes place. We proclaim in 1 John chapter 1, verses 3 to 4, 
We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard so that you may also have fellowship, fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. You know, that's why people are complaining so much that they want to go back to the church setting because it's that fellowship, that, that touch, that, that, you know, that, that feel of being together with a body of believers. God made us that way. But sin has entered into the picture and, and, and wants to detach us from each other and wants to separate us from each other. And God says that, that, that he wants us to be in a, a, a relationship with him, with our families and with our neighbors and with our co-workers and others in our community and society. As God starts, we are to adopt the role of a servant in our dealings with each other and provide for our family members and carry each other's burdens. In short, we are to use every opportunity to do good to others, especially those who belong to the family of God, Paul says in Galatians. This is the gospel. While here upon earth, in visible form, Jesus went about everywhere doing good to all he encountered. And, and that woman who had the issue of blood, she, 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 she pressed through the crowd to get to Jesus and she, she touched the hem of his garment. And when she touched the hem of his garment, ah, Jesus had to stop in the midst of that big crowd and says, somebody touch me. And Jesus wants to touch you tonight. He wants to reach out and touch you but you know, he's a gentleman and he won't touch you unless you allow him to. And he's knocking at your heart's door tonight. Number six, tissue temple. Tissue temple refers to the care and use of our bodies. The apostle Paul reminds us of some important truths in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 through 20. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? who is in you, whom you have received from God. You are not your own. You were bought with a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. With the psalmist, we declare that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalms 139. Each one of us is special to God, endowed and gifted just the way he wanted to endow and gift us so that we can be his instruments for good in this world. And God expects us to take care of our bodies. One of the big problems we have in the Bahamas today is non-communicable diseases. And the reason why we have so much of these non-communicable diseases in our, in our country tonight, one of the highest, not only in our region, but in the world, is because people refuse to take care of their bodies the way God said so. God gave us health laws. And that's why I'm prepared to give uh, $20 to two persons who will be at our meetings on Friday to attend these health seminars that are being offered by UG Pines, that, that we would learn the principles that God has taught in his word. God has taught us that there are some things we mustn't eat. He's taught us that wine is a mocker and strong drink is raging. And in, in Proverbs chapter 23, 23, he tells us that when we see the wine stirring in the cup and make it the eye red, we must not touch it because it causes wounds. It causes bruises. And we see it every day. And we still want to partake of these things that are no good for us. Too much sugar in our diet. Too much fat in our diet. Eating unclean foods that the Bible tells us that we ought not to eat. Because if we love God, we're going to be willing to obey God. Would you say amen out there? Number seven, in the garden, we see that God creates a perfect God. But right after man's sin, we see things beginning to decay and trash begins to accumulate. God has designed us to be stewards of this earth. We live in a country that is probably one of the most beautiful countries on the face of this earth. With, with, they call it the blue, the blue country. When the astronauts go up and they look back at the beautiful, tranquil, turquoise waters here in the Bahamas, all they can say is, wow. But you know, we are quickly destroying our reefs and our 
environment we are careless I, I drive on the road and you see people taking their beer bottles and and other their their, 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 their plastic uh, food containers and just throwing it out their car windows and littering the place and refusing to take good care of it god says we must have dominion and we must rule over the fish and the sea and the birds and the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground and god expects us to be good stewards of the environment if we cut down a tree we must plant another one you didn't hear that if you cut down one plant two because the environment needs it and god expects us to be good managers of our environment. When he placed Adam in the garden in Genesis 2 verse 50, God put Adam in the garden of Eden to work it and to take care of it. That is as much Christian as it is to give your life to Jesus Christ. Nasty people and people who refuse to take care of their environment do not reflect God's command in our lives that he gave to Adam. Take care of it and manage it. Unfortunately, he and Eve, Adam and Eve disobeyed God, but you and I have an opportunity tonight to become obedient to God's will. As a result of their disobedience, sin entered in the world. And the last T, technology. Once again, and this one is common sense. God created man <laughs> with the capacity to grow the Bible says knowledge will increase. A Christian stewardship begins with the conviction that everything we have, everything we have, time, talent, treasure, testimony, touch, tissue, trash, and now technology is a gift from God's hands. Our response as called and redeemed children of God is to seek to use these gifts effectively and efficiently to his glory and in his service in and to the kingdom of God, both here on earth and ultimately in heaven. Because the Bible says that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard, neither has it entered in the heart of man the things that God has gone to prepare for us. Somebody asked me the question, well, 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 pastor, if marriage is not going to be in heaven, of course, um, <laughs> you know, what is going to happen? I said, well, what are you worried? And they said to me, well, I need to get married before Jesus come. I said, well, no need to worry. If you don't get married, if you're only going to get married just so you can get married before Jesus come, you might get married for the wrong reason. But the fact of the matter is, is if, if you don't get married here before Jesus comes, because not everybody's going to get married, that whatever God has in heaven is going to be better than marriage. And so God has given us this technology and it must be used for his honor and his glory. Let me hasten to say that everything that God has given to us for our good, the devil has tried to take it and use it for bad. And so just like how we can use this technology to get the gospel of Jesus Christ out of the world, the devil will take this same technology and use it to try and get his message across to young people and older ones alike. And we are great, or rather, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And so tonight, I invite you to be a good steward of God. And as we sum up these eight T's of stewardship, may I suggest to you tonight that there is one foundational word from God to us through the Bible and the Apostle Paul that we need to consider. It's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, where he writes, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, make sure that it brings honor and glory to God. May this be our goal tonight, to use every gift with which our Heavenly Father blesses us with in whatever quantity he sees fit to bless us, to achieve the purpose for which he has sent us into this world, namely to make us disciples of, of all races, of all peoples, to come into his kingdom and to be faithful to what he has called us to. And my appeal to you tonight 
And if you understand that God has called you to be a good steward and you have not yet decided to be a faithful follower of Jesus Christ, or you have not yet decided to accept all that he has asked of you to do, that tonight you need to determine that you will follow Jesus all the way and give him your total life. You might have been following him already and you've backslidden and God is always willing for you to slide back into his fold and into his kingdom. And he says to you tonight, now is the time. Now is the day of salvation. Behold, now is the opportunity for you to say, Lord, I want to be a good a good steward of God. And a part of that stewardship has to do with you deciding to follow Jesus all the way. And to tonight, if there's somebody, someone's out there who's listening to me, you're sitting in the comfort of your home, I want you to fall on your knees right now and say, Father, I have sinned. I have not been faithful. I have been careless with what you've asked me to do. I've been careless with my time. I've been careless with my treasure. I've been careless with my temple. I've been careless with my tissue. I've been careless even with my technology. I've been watching things on this internet that I should not have been watching. There are scores of us who are allowing the devil to use this technology to push things in our minds that are not of God. You've been careless. And you want to say tonight, Lord, I surrender. I repent of my sins and I'm coming home. I'm coming to you, Jesus, Lord. I, I want to give my heart to you tonight. Please indicate the same. Call us. Call us. Call us. We want to help you. 422-0158. 422-0158. You've been listening to me night after night. You know that the Holy Spirit is telling you to do his will and you resisting. But I say to you tonight, allow the Holy Spirit to take over. Make your confession in the chat group. Let people know which side you stand on. There are only two sides, God and the devil. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for your word. You are a good God. You've given us so much. We could never be bored with all the things that you've given us to manage. And you're there to help us because you said with, with every request that you make of us, you will also provide your Holy Spirit to enable us to do your will. Lord, we have failed you so many times and we ask that you just try us one more time. And tonight, I know that there are many who need to make that decision to follow you. They're following you from a, from a distance. Like Peter, when Jesus was in the praetorium and, and they were asking him, are you connected to Jesus? And, and Peter says, oh no. You want to be, have the blessings of God, but you don't want to step out. Tonight God is saying, step out, let the world know that I am following Jesus. And Jesus will give you the victory over every besetting, besetting sin. No matter what it is, if you just say, Lord, I surrender all. I'll help you. And even if you fall, he says, just confess your sins. He is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Oh, Lord, give somebody the victory tonight. Loose them from the chains of, of, of doubt and, 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 and distrust and and, 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 and fear. May they come running to the foot of the cross and saying, I surrender, Lord, all to you. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. I feel so inadequate, but we know it's not about me. You now do your work, but I've done what you've asked me to do, and I'll continue till the day I die. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Good night and God bless. What a word, Clayton. Powerful, powerful, powerful. Yes, yes. Uh, so much compacted so powerfully in such a small place. Are all yes. the T's that God has given us in, Gen in Genesis uh, instruments to test our faithfulness to him? I mean, I, I looked at those things in quite a new way tonight. 
I'm yes. more than happy to do, but and, and also, you know, perfect opportunities to honor him and to bless others. Yes. Yes, and so tonight, Clayton, perhaps we need to remind those who are watching also to call the hotline. There are persons waiting just to pray with them because I'm sure that that message tonight has touched somebody. And so the numbers are on the screen. Um, we're inviting all of our viewers to take advantage, full advantage of the opportunity. All right, and uh, there'll be 10 minutes where we can ask Pastor questions. He'll be around for 10 minutes. So if you have a quick question you want to ask him afterwards or a comment you wanted to make, he'll be around for another 10 minutes. Uh, please invite someone to the meet for the meetings on Friday night and enjoy the rest of your evening. Yes, yeah, see you all on Friday. Thank you for joining the Centerville Seventh-day Adventist Church community for our live presentation of the Path to Life in the Box Discovery Series. Your presence has given us such joy. Tell your friends to join us with you next time for the Path to Life in the Box Discoveries. Yes, your growth continues here. <laughs>